All right, everybody. Woo! Welcome, everybody, to the uh, Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework Bi-Weekly Sync. All right, let's talk about some stuff. Let's click on it. All right, so I'm your host. I'm Chris Kent. Uh, that's it. All right, so we got all sorts of fun things to talk about today, right? We'll do a bunch of updates. We'll go through uh, literally everything possible and uh, talk about them as fast as we possibly can. It'll be great. Then we'll take a picture together uh, in together mode, and then we'll have some lovely demos. We've got a demo from Robin. All right, we're going to take a look at, uh, you know, insights and control and uh, whatever that says there about the <laughs> SPFX web part. All right, then Casper's up next, our brand new MVP, Casper. He's going to show us a little more about PNP Modern People Search. And then we've got uh, Pablo. <laughs> Just kidding, Paolo. All right, he's going to be presenting next on the uh, Microsoft Graph via Azure Services. So pretty exciting stuff for Aces. So let's get going. Woo! All right. So first off, we've got all sorts of things for you. If you just head on over to some of these links, right? We've got all sorts of things like videos. We've got I don't know how many videos we got at this point, Vesta. We got like three, four. Uh, no more. Just, uh, more than thousand, <laughs> I guess we have. Oh, wow. So, but you do not get the total number of videos from the YouTube channel, which is weird. So by default, so it's yeah. I don't know a lot. And there's multiple accounts too, right? So it's that's like, true. Yeah. That is true as well. So a lot of videos. Well, and how concerned should I be that I have a uh, oops something went wrong on my team screen? Does everyone uh, still hear me? <laughs> no, we can hear you fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll just go until I'm gone. How's that? All right. So we've also got this <laughs> LinkedIn group. What? But yep. Ooh, still all right. Here we go. All right. We got all sorts of different uh, repositories for you. A ton and ton of samples, right? So, got literally thousands of samples across uh, you know, SPFX. Uh, list format, even the Power Platform and Teams and so on. We have more sample repositories on the way and so on. So if you head over to this aka.ms slash community slash home, you find links to all of these things and more and resources for getting started and going with all this and all of these calls as well. So we're on this call. This call happens every two weeks. It alternates with the uh, general dev call. Uh, so check these out. We also have our Tuesday calls that are Microsoft presenters only. And we've got the Power Platform call monthly. We've got all these add-ins that are monthly and so on and so on. Calls forever and ever and ever. And they're all recorded to YouTube. Uh, so you can watch them on 2x speed while it sounds like squirrels. And it's great. All right. And then here we go. This is, uh, what is this, the next call here on the 16th of January. So we've got Gary, Grant, and Patrick. Let me do some exciting things for you. So be sure to check that out. If you go out of this link right here, uh, right, you can get the, the invite to that. That'll get updated for you uh, with time zone changes and all those exciting things. Okay, and finally, we need more presenters. So if you are looking to come on here and show off some cool stuff, head over to here, fill out this form. Uh, we literally mean everyone is welcome, right? So the idea is if you got something cool, it doesn't have to be some amazing thing you spent six months on, right? If you solve something, right, that's gonna help somebody. So show it off. So come over here, present this, and uh, we'll get you on the call. We'll work, walk you through it. Not so scary. All right, and then finally, we've got this sharing is caring. David, you wanna talk about this? Yeah, absolutely, everybody. So this is a program that's providing hands-on guidance, and we're scaling it up. It's 2024. Our office hours are launching soon. We're getting them scheduled this week, so be on the lookout for that uh, because we are here to help you, and they're going to be a, uh, there's safe space opportunities, which means we don't record them. So you're free, free to ask any and all questions that you'd like uh, in a safe space, and we're going to collaborate together. And then once you do contribute, we want to recognize you, and that's where our recognition program is back for 2024, powered by Credly located there we see those new badges coming out so we've got a clean slate all the favorite badges from last year will still carry over and we're looking to add new i guess i'm done <laughs> we're looking to add new badges <laughs> we're looking to add new badges for 2024 everybody so just need you to opt in we're at almost a thousand a thousand that have opted in you could be the thousand so do so at ak.ms slash community slash recognition uh, and start getting recognized chris back to you wow we all right, so let's talk about SharePoint Framework. Vesa, I assume you're going to give us some updates on that. Yeah, quick updates in here. Wowee, right, Chris? Uh, so <laughs> I'm trying to learn the same thing. So right. uh, ESPFX usage is growing all the time. We can nicely see the daily jump again after the, uh, the after the new year. Uh, usage is out of roof. We have tens of millions of monthly access users for the custom SPFX components all around Microsoft 365. All good. Now, on the next slide, uh, this is the, the roadmap slide, which we provided actually in December. There will be some changes in here. Uh, I will share those details a bit later. Uh, right now, for example, the bot part, Vivo Connection, Adaptive Card extensions are a bit delayed.
right, um, there's certain things which we still need to work on there that time. Um, but also on the next year, which is this year, which is 2024 year, um, there's going to be <laughs> some more details on that area immediately when, when we get stuff uh, uh, locked down internally. But we'll share the updates in the roadmap as we can. So that's a quick update from my side. So let's move on to the uh, open source projects. All right, so open source projects. Do we have anybody, uh, Bo, or anybody here to talk about PMPJS? I'm here, I'm here. Oh, Julie. Can you truly do? Even you? better than Bo, we are. for sure. There is no way, Vesa. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, version 3.22 is going to be released next week. Uh, I'm, I'm working on that holiday, so I'll get that out there. Uh, we have um, a fix for from absolute path methods, uh, referencing that undefined this object, so a little bit of uh, fix there. There's also a, a small update to the request digest to remove the injected OData header. So when you have overridden the header for verbose mode, that was causing uh, an error. So that's a quick fix for that. There's also an ongoing issue with uh, the 3.21 release in Node.js projects. There's some intermittent issues there. And of course, our expert Bo is on that uh, problem and where he's hopefully gonna be able to come up with a fix. Um, version four is well underway. If you're watching that branch, you're gonna you're seeing that there's just lots and lots and lots of PRs going on there. We're working hard on it. Uh, and their V4 nightly builds are out now. Uh, I didn't update that, but it is out, so you can see the V4 nightly builds. And we are hopefully, we're working on, we're not 100% there, but we're working on having both ESM and common JS modules in that build because uh, of some new features in the package.json that allow us to do that. Uh, so that new V4 uh, build is there. It's not perfectly working, but it is there. So you can take a look at that. As usual, follow us, Microsoft 365 platform community on LinkedIn. That is the primary area where we share information about what's going on. Uh, and um, yeah, that's all I got. Back to you, Chris. Awesome. Sounds like all sorts of stuff's going on. Really looking forward to uh, the version four coming out very soon. Woo woo. All right. We got someone to talk about CLI? Yep. Hey, Chris. All right. Uh, so. Okay, so we've got new beta for CLI for Microsoft 365. It's uh, version 7.4. Um, so we've got some new commands for uh, Microsoft Entra, uh, adding uh, admin unit scopes to users. But the big uh, change here is we're renaming all the commands from AAD to use Entra now. So that's a change that you're going to see. Um, we've added some new support for Power Apps as well. So you can now get and remove uh, Power Apps from your environments as an admin. Um, and a long uh, requested feature as well, you can now use CLI for Microsoft 365 behind a corporate proxy, um, which uh, I know a lot of people have asked about, and it's finally here in beta, and that'll be released at the end of the month into the uh, into the normal release. Um, we have an office hours coming up on Discord, so if you're interested in CLI and just want to come and have a chat, then uh, Monday 29th of January uh, is when that's going to happen. Um, to access that, join our Discord server. Go to aka.ms slash CLI hyphen M365 slash Discord. Uh, you can join the server if you're not already a member. And if you want to look at any other details for this release, uh, go to aka.ms slash CLI hyphen M365 slash notes, and you'll see all the release notes for this release. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we have a new beta release of the dev proxy. Uh, so it's a tool that's gonna help you simulate API errors, API behaviors, and mock API responses, and now much, much more. And we, this is a huge release that's coming uh, in uh, the end of January, which is gonna be our 0 0.14 release. Uh, so we now have the ability for you to basically simulate your own CRUD API. So if you're developing, APIs are not quite ready yet, you don't want to fully mock out a whole uh, architecture, you can now use the proxy to do that. It's a really cool feature. Um, you can now generate API documents as well using the proxy. So just start the proxy, run your um, app request against your API, and we'll generate a, a document for you as well, which then you can use with, with other tools. Um, downloading samples from uh, presets from the 
examples gallery as well. Support for rate limiting. We've got lots of feature updates, JSON schemas, simplified install as well. Lots of documentation updates that are coming for this uh, release. So if you've not tried uh, Proxy yet, this is the best time to try it. Um, Go along to aka.ms slash dev proxy. You'll find all of our uh, documentation and links to all the other resources. Uh, Chris, back to you. Fancy. Ooh. All right. What about uh, those SPFX controls? We got anybody for that there? Yep, Chris. All right. I'm here. <clears throat> right. Yeah, so uh, we released a page release for React controls on January 6th. And uh, shout out to uh, Michael Mallet for that. It was his first like release release uh, that he completely done without uh, anybody else. So great uh, for that. Uh, other than that, we are still on 3.15.0 for uh, property controls. Uh, check out uh, the latest versions with uh, all the updates in there. And all these releases are possible because of you. If you have any uh, issues or if you want to contribute, fix a bug, or you have any ideas, uh, go to uh, GitHub and uh, submit PRs and issues. Thank you very much. Back to you, Chris. Mm. All right. Let's talk about this uh, Viva Connections toolkit. Somebody? Hmm? Hey. Anybody? Uh, yeah. yeah me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're cool, right? Okay. So, wow. Viva Connections toolkit is a Visual Studio Code extension that will boost your productivity in SharePoint framework development. So, okay, the name is a bit misleading, but we are planning to rename it to SharePoint Framework to Toolkit together with V3. Currently, we released a new pre release, so the V2.4.1 which it brings a um, totally refactored view for the sample gallery. So now instead of four sample galleries, you have one with filters and you can use a single view to browse 400 plus samples, scenarios of uh, SPFX web parts extension ACES that you can boost your new project with a single click. And also you can see all the sample uh, details from the readme file directly in VS Code without transitioning to GitHub. So it's really awesome. And currently we are working on uh, extending new ca capabilities to the CI/CD pipeline action, which we are going to bring the support for Azure DevOps. And we are currently working on it. I hope we will be delivering it quite soon. On the slide, you can see the rest of the things we are planning to deliver to the, the bigger things we are planning to de deliver with V3. Be sure if you are using, if you are doing any kind of SPFX development, be sure to try out this extension because it will boost and help you significantly. And happy coding, everybody. Back to you, Chris. Woo! All right, and and if we could get uh, a few more emojis and uh, red squares and arrows on this slide, that'd be really great. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm working. I'm, I'm, I'm improving all the time. I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So, uh, Casper, let's talk about modern search. Yeah, sure. We released uh, 4.10 uh, about two or three weeks ago, and it has been uh, fairly stable, and we haven't had any issues with that yet, thanks God. But we have a lot of um, traffic on the repository, a lot of people asking questions, asking suggestions, and uh, coming up with good ideas for other people as well. So if you see anybody asking about something to do with uh, PMP Modern Search, in that uh, be in, uh, in LinkedIn or in uh, Facebook or wherever, Please uh, ask them to 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 uh, to the to join the repository and ask the questions there because we are monitoring that uh, fairly closely. So uh, back to you, Chris. All right. All right, David. You want to talk about these samples? David. Ah, David. teams won't unmute. Here I am. Wow, we I want to talk about these samples. Yes, absolutely. Wow. So, wow. We've got a uh, hat trick from Nick Brown coming in with Fluent UI 9 demo group manage, uh, membership manager and pages hierarchy. And then Lewis, Mohammed, and Joel have all contributed for calling Azure OpenAI API in stream mode, a calendar, and Workbench customizer. Hugo has been busy covering all these things and getting him, act, uh, getting him added to the, uh, to the repo. So thank you. He just had to go uh, take care of you know, fixing world problems as Hugo does. So I'm covering for him today, but plenty of opportunity for more samples. So definitely get involved there. And the same thing on the next slide with ACES. Still plenty of opportunity for you to get involved. Uh, Derek and Anoop have been covering that very, very brilliantly. So please contribute. We love to see more samples. Uh, you are more than welcome. And again, if you have any questions, be on the lookout for those sharing is caring office hours. We can help you do that. Chris, back to you. Oh yeah. All right, let's take some pictures. All right, Vesa, you gonna take over and take some photos of people? <laughs> yes, indeed. Wowee! Right. 
Wow! Wow! <laughs> so Wowie. we have 50 seats in the room. So let's see uh, who we will get here this time. Uh, Nick is on the on the house. Thank you, Nick, for the three samples. That was really very really cool uh, for those contributions. Like I say, Paolo, like I say, Nish. A lot of lot of familiar faces here. 50 seats in the room. Let's see. We will record in a second. Uh, Rachel is there. There's Stefan. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That wave is good. That's that's how we're going to do this this time, right? Uh, cool. Uh, I will put the recording on and let's do some hand waving <laughs> and waving hands. Thanks everybody for joining. <laughs> awesome. And we'll crap a GIF animation out of this and, and share it in the <laughs> in the social media. Thanks everybody. Awesome to see <laughs> happy faces and, and new faces and old faces in these photos. Thank you everybody. Back to you, Chris, and we'll share a GIF animation out of that in social media, in LinkedIn and in Twitter. So follow us on that. All right. Well, I don't have any buttons in Teams, uh, so I won't be hitting share again. But uh, Robin, I assume, uh, are you ready? If, uh, if you're ready, you can go ahead and share your screen and unmute and you can have at the demo. It'll be exciting. exciting. Ooh, yeah, so I must Ooh. confess, this is my first community call ever. Um, so, uh, uh, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Far too kind. Um, so I'm Robin Murray. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Cloud Solution Architect uh, based out of the Netherlands, and I'm going to talk about my governor sharing app. Now, what the hell does that app do? It, um, it basically gives the team or site owner the ability to uh, show documents that have been explicitly shared with other users, uh, either to an internal user or, or guest or, or to everyone. Uh, and either by giving them direct access or via a sharing link. And of course, th this picture does say a thousand words, but I think a demo uh, is better. Uh, so this web part <clears throat> uh, runs in SharePoint, of course, because it's a SharePoint frame web part. And uh, it also runs in the beauty of Teams. And the cool thing about why it's running in Teams is that we also get Teams uh, context. Um, uh, and it, uh, the cool thing about that is I can also know which group the team site is a, is, is, is a part of, uh, and thus I can also get documents from private channels, which are, of course, separate site collections. Um, and I think, is it on this one? No, I think it's on the second page. There is an actual document in secret, and secret is, of course, this secret channel. Um, so let's uh, talk about on how we uh, build this. And uh, and what you need to get it uh, to get it to run. Uh, so the first thing is that the only thing I need from an API permission perspective is the sites that read all for the graph. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why I wanted to have a a, a, um, a graph permission. Right, it's actually on, on the screen. Is because I'm uh, getting the sharing information from the drive item permissions endpoint. And also, uh, it's good to know that all code runs, of course, in the context of the current login user. Uh, hence, it's a delegated call. Um, and I make use of search. So all the documents you will see are securely trimmed. Uh, and therefore, also all the calls to the permissions endpoint will work because the user has access to those documents. Right, so I gave it away. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, so first, we are issuing a search query uh, towards the graph endpoint, uh, and that's the primary reason of that is to retrieve the drive item ID of those files. Um, then, based on the number of files I get back, uh, I put the file IDs into a, a state in SharePoint Framework, and use that for pagination. And the reason for the pagination is I want to do a batch call of maximum of, of 15 files on each substantial call because the data from search could be stale. Um, uh, so I want to really see what's really happening. And the information from search is not complete. Uh, for example, a sharing link does not appear uh, in, a, uh, in the managed property I'm using. Uh, so hence, uh, but it is shared, which is uh, coming back. So that reason I'm calling the permission endpoint. And then, of course, uh, because the maximum, I think, uh, items you can do in one batch call is 15, uh, or perhaps it's 20, but I think 15 is uh, is more better. Is, is better. I don't want to overload the system. Uh, and also, to not overload the system, uh, I implemented paging, 
um, I am using, I make use of the PPJS library to also uh, client side cache uh, the results I get back. Um, and I use search. So uh, let's dive in because perhaps most people don't know you can do this with, within search. So the reason why I'm using search is it doesn't really matter how many documents are in a team site or uh, or on a, a SharePoint library. Uh, it, it just works and, and it's quick. Um, and it, the, 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 the second cool thing is it's security trimmed. So you only see which uh, items and documents your permissions to. And the second or the first thing is um, and this is actually did blew, blew my mind. Uh, I didn't know that this was possible. I think since a year this is possible. Um, uh, but now you can also do like a wildcard search for a single managed property just to see if something is in the property. Um, and that's why. So this is how my uh, career looks like. So I make use of the share with users OES user managed property. Uh, and there I put in a wildcard. Uh, that basically gives me back all if a document has been shared with a user or with using sharing link. Um, and the other two are uh, it's the everyone except external users uh, or the everyone user. Uh, then the second thing uh, in, in filtering out what we want to get back is I want to e either get documents back and I want to have folders back. So that's is documents true or is containers true. We don't want to get uh, that HPX pages back, so we're not interested in news pages or home pages for that, for that matter. And uh, if we're in Teams, uh, I also want to scope um, the query down to get documents back from the current group ID and or the related group IDs, and that's like the private channels. <clears throat> uh, and if we're only in SharePoint, uh, I'm going to filter only on the current site using the site URL. So that's basically to filter all the documents uh, which we get back. So once we have that, so this is how, by the way, it looks like in code. Um, it's against uh, the Graph API. Uh, this is how the query. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty straightforward. And it's, it's also, um, uh, how do you say that? It's, uh, it, it can call itself if there are more than 500 documents within uh, the, the library. Um, or at least five more than five documents are being uh, fetched. It does it again uh, until I reach uh, the limit on the uh, amount of documents which are shared. Um, there's a word for that. I don't know what the English word is again, but it subsequently calls itself until it's done. So next we have the set of the files, uh, and then we're gonna uh, check per file what the permissions are using the permissions endpoint. Uh, the reason for that is I want to know how things are being shared and if the file is still being shared uh, or the file is being shared via inheritance permissions, so not an explicit sharing. This is how it looks like uh, in code. Uh, in the current PMPJS library I'm using, there was no uh, option yet to, uh, to use the permissions endpoint. Uh, hence, I am um, uh, doing the graph variable. Um, method getting all the items uh this is the json i get back and also take a look um on in the in the in the um, demo later on how the the whole uh, json looks like but this is um what i get back for a single uh, drive item id and this is a subset of the uh of, of the data i get back for a specific document uh, I think that's it for now, uh, uh, unless I can also go in, 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 in into the details. So what I also want to get out is the next steps. So the next steps is uh, basically, so um, I wanted to share that in the beginning as well. This is not a competition against uh, a graph that you connect um, um, uh, offering that, that we also have, right? So that's like a tenant wide set of data about documents being shared. Um, but it will be nice to integrate with that. Uh, so instead of doing a search query, we're doing a query against that um, the Azure data storage uh, to get the, the shared data documents from there. Or perhaps read the CSV file, which gets created if you do if you run a site sharing report. Um, 
And um, the other thing I want to work on is uh, extend the governor suite because uh, so hence the name is this is now governor sharing and I'm also working on governor storage uh, to give you more insights on the difference between consumed storage and reported storage within SharePoint. Um, and uh, how actually this whole app became is uh, I want to add a Blazor version. So uh, the history of this app is we I did a version first version in Blazor. Uh, I showed it to a customer, uh, enterprise customer, and I, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we 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 want this. Um, how can we? Um, what's the timeline? I was like, well, you can you need to set up an Azure website, and they were like, ah, okay, then we need to talk to the Azure people. Uh, okay, that, that probably like will take like twelve weeks to get something up and running. Um, and then I was like, okay, perhaps I should just use SharePoint Framework uh, and make use uh, of the infrastructure already there to deploy the app. Um, and from there on, I use SharePoint Framework uh, to create this app. But I also want to create a Blazor version of, uh, of the app. So you have the possibility uh, of using two technologies. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, woo, back to you, Chris, I guess. Woohoo, indeed. All right. Thank you, Robin. That was very awesome. And all that, let's see. Oh, look, I'm shared again. That's exciting. Just in time to say, Casper, you feel free to share. <laughs> Go ahead and take over, and we'll see uh, your exciting demo. Thank you. So, what we're uh, going to look at today is uh, PMP button search, and especially uh, the people search part of it, because uh, that's been a pre frequently requested uh, topic uh, lately. So if we go into, that's just me, let's skip that one. Um, why are we searching for people? Because basically, uh, why can't we just live with what Microsoft is providing already? Because if I go into any kind of site and I'm looking for our favorite Adele, and we can see her in the organization tab up here, we can see people and we have a lot of information about uh, Adele in this case. And we can do that with any other uh, member of uh, our uh, tenant here. So why isn't that just good enough? Well, for starters, this is only uh, this is a global scope, so it's everybody, and we might not use that. So we have a lot of uh, different uh, cases where we would prefer to roll it a little bit different. So if we go back to our site here again, we would perhaps like to create our own employee directory rather than the one that Microsoft is providing. And uh, David provided one for a sample of how to create that um, some time ago. And in this case, you can see that we have uh, all of the different uh, various um, ways to display it. And we also have a lot of different uh, refiners because that's a pretty common uh, request. And we can create those refiners and specify how they are behaving. So we have a lot of more options uh, than uh, what uh, out of the box uh, Microsoft uh, Shirts has right now. As uh, I mentioned, another one could be that we would just like to see who is in a department. That's just not an option right now with the out-of-the-box solution. So in this case, we've created a web part that's just displaying the members of a specific department for some reason on their department uh, homepage in the internet, for instance. So that's an easy way to do it. And it also it's automatically updated. So whenever people are moving from one department to another, this one just uh, updates automatically because it's all based on the data behind it. This we also have to uh, provide for uh, custom properties. In this case, I have a nationality and I also have an employee <laughs> number and some kind of security clearance. So uh, we have uh, options to do that as well. We can't do that in our other box. So, uh, and we see that with a lot of customers that they have their own um, user profile data that they just need to have in their uh, in their people uh, cards. So uh, that's the way to to do that. We also had uh, the option to create, for instance, birthdays and anniversaries. So there's a, 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 a guide how to to set that up uh, in the repository and. Uh, that is also information that we can pull from the user profiles, which is uh, some kind of the source for this one. So we are at a uh, interesting point in time right now because we have two sources that we can use uh, right now. We are moving basically towards uh, Microsoft Search 
uh, more and more, and SharePoint search is not officially deprecated. But as far as we can see, it's not really been developing. Uh, well, there's no development on that uh, that area anymore. So uh, we would really like to uh, to switch to uh, Microsoft Search or uh, People Search as well. However, all of the options that we have available when we're using SharePoint uh, as the data source for for this, there we're using uh, the user profiles, the oh, the very old user profile application that we know back from. Yeah, it was there when I started working with SharePoint. That was back in 2007, I think it was. And in that user profile, we have all of the out of the box uh, profiles, uh, the profile properties here, but we can also add additional pro properties that you saw before, like nationality, security clearance, and whatever. And those uh, properties are easily mapped to um, uh, uh, to uh, manage properties and therefore can be made available in our people search. That is an option that we do not have today in uh, in the Microsoft area. So basically, we have to have a look at should we use Microsoft Search or should we use uh, SharePoint Search for for people search? And for the time being, we have to uh, rely on SharePoint Search for. At, for a little bit longer, we don't know exactly when uh, that we will get uh, parity uh, for for Microsoft Search as well as for for SharePoint Search because it's still in beta basically, and some of the basic functionality like you're making a wildcard search and stuff like that, it's just not there yet. But we are getting there, and we will update the documentation. Uh, in, in the repository on how to use uh, Microsoft Search for people search as well, as soon as it becomes available. And it is going in the right direction, but we are not right there yet. So uh, we hope that, uh, let's see in a year's time or perhaps two, then we should be uh, be able to to use Microsoft Search for, for people search. But as it is right now, we have to stick to, to SharePoint search. And that's also, as far as documentation goes, Way easier because there's a lot of documentation on how to use uh, people search with uh, SharePoint as the data source. So uh, that was a very brief overview of uh, how to, uh, to uh, how, how uh, people search works today, and uh, we'll see what uh, we'll come up with next time. It will be something about document search, I think, for uh, the next one. Thank you, Chris. All right, awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, Casper. Uh, so, Paolo, you've got uh, plenty of time, so uh, go for it. Take uh, take all the time you need whenever you're ready yeah. to connect here. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Thank you. I'm ready, and I will take plenty of time to show my demo. Yeah. Okay, so today we are going to have a look at how you can properly implement an adaptive card extension for Microsoft Viva Connection, consuming Microsoft Graph in the backend using Azure services. I'm Paolo, and I work in a company of my own called BSS.com. Let me first of all set the context of this demo, and then I will uh, uh, move to the uh, actual code and show you how it works. So the overall idea of uh, this uh, sample application is to provide an expense report uh, card inside uh, Microsoft Viva Connection because the target of this solution is to allow uh, mobile users uh, to uh, upload their expense uh, reports uh, and being able to uh, target a SharePoint Online document library with some metadata about the expense reports uh, working uh, on a mobile device uh, and using Viva Connection. The back end of this solution, so of the card, is based on an Azure function which uh, uh, makes available a REST API, a secured REST API, secured with open authorization and uh, Microsoft Entra ID. And as I said, the target uh, repository for storing the uh, receipts and all the metadata is a document library in SharePoint Online with a custom content type and some custom fields. And last but not least, in the demo, we are also going to see how you can properly leverage the on behalf of Flow to make it possible to upload the documents and to update the metadata of the documents in SharePoint on behalf of the user uh, consuming the application in the front end. 
Here in the graphics, you can see how the uh, initial curve view looks like uh, in the uh, Viva Connection uh, uh, dashboard UI on the desktop and on the mobile, because I want to stress this information. Whenever you create a solution for Microsoft Viva Connection, your primary target is, in my opinion, the mobile experience. Very often, we only see the desktop experience. And even in my demo, you will see the demo running in a desktop experience because it's easier when you do a demo in a, a, in a community call like this one. But actually, the real main focus of a Viva Connection dashboard is to make uh, the cards available to mobile users in an easy way uh, through the uh, Viva Connection uh, app inside the Teams. And so in the lower part, lower right part of the screen, you can see how the card looks like in the mobile device, as well as you can see the quick view, which is the interface we use to upload the report, as well as what you see when you have uploaded the expense report and you get uh, back a positive feedback, uh, feedback for your action. So. Uh, stop talking and let's move to the demo. Actually, I will keep on talking. Sorry, I'm sorry for you, but I will talk showing you the demo and showing you the code base of this demo. So let me switch uh, first of all to the uh, sample itself. One, uh, I think, really important information for you is that the demo that I'm going to show you now is uh, completely available on the uh, adoptionmicro.com site under the sample gallery. It is called Expense Reports uh, ACE, and you can find it uh, uh, by searching for expense, for example, in the search engine of the solution gallery. From here, you can have access to the GitHub repository and you can download the whole source code of the front end adaptive card extension as well as of the back end uh, Azure function. That said, let's have a look uh, at the uh, demo from an end user perspective first, and then I will explain you how it works uh, under the cover. So this is my uh, ACE, my adaptive card extension running in the Viva Connection dashboard. And from here, I can click on the new expense or tap uh, through a mobile device uh, on the new expense uh, uh, button. And uh, I will have, I will be prompted with a quick view. Uh, where I can provide the information uh, like the description of my expense report. So community uh, dinner, because why not? And it will be a, uh, I don't know, a food and beverages category for my expense. It will be uh, an expense of today. I can upload a receipt so I can choose to browse for an item like I'm doing right here and I need to close this one and I can add the item and then I can submit my expense. And as soon as I will uh, have uh, submitted my expense, I can go to SharePoint Online and I can see that if I refresh this document library, I will have a new document, actually the image that I just uploaded, with all of the metadata that I configured through the adaptive card extension in the UI of the Viva Connection dashboard. So that's the demo experience and the user experience from an end user point of view. Now let's dig into how it works uh, and how we can do that uh, using Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio. So uh, first thing first, uh, we have uh, the SharePoint uh, framework solution. In this one, I'm using SharePoint framework 1.18.2 and I have created an adaptive card extension. In this one, we can see I have the definition of my adaptive card, and inside the adaptive card, I'm simply relying on a service class that I created, which is exactly this one, the expense report service.ts file, which relies on the uh, Azure Active Directory HTTP client uh, type uh, available uh, out of the box in SharePoint Framework. Uh, right now, I will not dig into the uh, definition of this service class, uh, but just to let you know here, we simply create an instance of the service class uh, and then we initialize uh, the URL of the target uh, endpoint of the API endpoint that we want to use. But what is interesting now from a user experience point of view is that inside this uh, ACE, in this adaptive card extension, in the home card view, which is the one with all of the coins, uh, to be uh, clear, we have uh, a button which will activate the quick view that we want to use to do the creation, the upload of the actual expense uh, receipt and report. The quick view that we use. Uh, is defined like any uh, regular uh, quick view in an adaptive card extension. And in this one, we configure a bunch of uh, settings and properties, like for example, all of the text that we want to see in the UI so that we can have a localized user experience for our end users, as well as uh, when we 
provide all of those settings in the get data method of the quick view, we can then rely on a JSON template because all of the quick views in the SharePoint framework and Active Card extension are based on a JSON file, JSON template based on the adaptive card schema. And in this one with adaptive card schema version 1.5, I have three fields, as you can see, an input text to get the description, one choice set to get the categories, which are uh, retrieved through data binding from the expense categories uh, property that I have in my card view right here. These are just are coded, but you can eventually do data binding with an external list of categories. Then we have the input.date field, but we also have in the actions, an action of type viva action dot select media, which is the one you can use and not only on a desktop experience, but also on a mobile device to do, for example, the upload of, the, of a picture that you have on your mobile phone, which could uh, easily be the picture of a receipt that you want to upload while making, while creating your expense report. And then I also have an action dot submit button, which will be used to do the actual submission of the form. And when I will click on the action dot submit, I will uh, come here in the on action method of my quick view, where I can see if the action triggered by the user is the action dot select media, it means that the user is going to upload the receipt. And as such, aside from logging something because I'm a developer and I love to do console log here and there because reasons, but just kidding, of course, uh, I set the state of my adaptive card extension. And specifically, I get from the data of the action that was triggered, the description, the category and the date, but I can also get the media section and in there for one or multiple files, because you can have eventually the upload of multiple files at once, I can get for each and every file, the file name and the actual content of the file as a base 64 encoded string. So that when the user will actually trigger the submit button for the submit expense action, I can validate the input data and then I can say, okay, relying on my expense report service, I can invoke a method to do the actual creation of the expense item. Sorry, I needed to drink. So um, here, these properties dot create expense report is nothing more than a property that I have in my uh, props type uh, interface for the adaptive card extension, which defines the signature of the method that I have in my main adaptive card extension class. And in this method, I simply rely on the service, on the expense report service that I created in the on init method of my ACE, and I invoke the create expense report method, providing an expense report object. The expense report object is just made of all of the metadata that we have seen before in the UI. And when we invoke the service, we rely on the AD HTTP client factory, which is a type provided by SharePoint Framework. And we create an instance of a client which will be secured through open authorization in order to be able to securely consume my backend API. My backend API is registered in Azure Active Directory right here. I have an application, which is uh, uh, the following one, where you can see that in the expose an API section, I configure a unique uh, ID for my API, which is exactly the one that I'm using here in SharePoint Framework to get a client for that one. So you provide the unique ID URI to tell SharePoint Framework for which API you want to have a client. And then in this section, I'm also declaring that I have a permission, which is called expense report dot create, which is a permission scope that is required in order to be able to securely consume my API. So right here in my SharePoint framework solution, I'm declaring that from a web API permission request point of view, I want to get access to my resource. This is the name of my application in Azure Active Directory, as you can see, this one pmp.expensereport.service, and this is the permission that I want to have. <coughs> Sorry. So once I declare this information in the configuration, and once I do 
the get client, I can then use the client object and make a REST request targeting my API. So here, for example, I target the endpoint URL of my API followed by slash API slash upload expense report, which will be the entry point for my uh, target API. I can build an HTTP request, which will be made of a custom header declaring that I'm sending an application JSON file, and I'm defining the body of the request, which will be the JSON stringify of my expense report object, and then I simply make a POST request targeting my service endpoint and providing the message, which will include the body, which is my JSON object. So this is the consumer part of the story. So the, the right, way of, right way of doing it, following a, a good pattern, is to create the client object through the factory and eventually to use a service class that you can easily initialize the, in the on init method of the SharePoint framework. And then you have to configure in the package solution the Web API permission request for your target API. Now, we move on the backend side, on the service side. So on the service side, we have, let me see if I can find it. Okay, we have also through the help of Swagger, the UI uh, to test our backend API. And as you can see here, we have an upload expense report uh, uh, action which accepts as an input a complex type, a JSON type made of all of the properties that we collected through the ACE, and it will accept a POST request, and it requires auto authentication and authorization through a bearer access token. So when we do uh, such a request in the UI, in fact, we can see that if I go back here and I create another request with F12, just to give you an idea of what is happening under the cover, I can say that this is another PMP dinner. We are full of food today and still, well, let's say others, just for the sake of it. It will be still today. And let me get again the picture. Oh, that's nice. Let me see if I can sort it out. Oh, I need to have, let me do that. Let me move this guy. Here, let me undock it so that we have room enough to do what we want to do. Sorry. So again, PMP community dinner. Others, let me get, it will be tomorrow, but I already know what I'm going to spend because reasons again, and I can add my receipt and I can send my expense, okay? Now that I'm doing that, if I will go back to my developer extensions, I can see under network that I made a request for the expense report. And this is the expense report that I submitted. And in the headers, we can see that we have an access token which has been provided by the SharePoint framework infrastructure out of the box because I made a request to create an AAD HTTP client and I provided the unique ID of my application. If I try to have a look to this access token just to see and just for the sake of understanding what's going on, we can see that this is a token for my API and inside the token we have the expense report dot create permission scope. So we are providing this header this custom uh, header with the access token to the target API. And as such, in the target API, we have, first of all, in the um, program.cs of our Azure function, the configuration of a bunch of services using dependency injection, and in uh, specifically in the uh, functions worker default settings, we are configuring a couple of uh, middleware classes. One will take care of the authentication and another one will take care of the authorization. I will not dig inside these two uh, classes, but basically inside those two classes, we simply process the access token that we receive in order to identify if it is a good one, properly signed by an identity provider that we trust, which is enter ID for me. And it has been issued by a tenant that we trust, which is the tenant I'm targeting. And then we can get the information about the user in the authentication middleware class. And we get the authorization scope uh, in in the uh, authorization middleware so that we can then inside the Azure function authorize the user to consume the actual API. And in fact, 
in my Azure function, I have a custom attribute, which is called function authorize, where I declared that in order to be able to consume this API, I want to have a permission scope of type expense report dot create. And if I will have it, I will allow the consumer to consume API. If not, I will simply return a, a 401 and I will deny the request. Plus the fact that I want to consume Microsoft Graph on behalf of the user. And that's why in my Azure app registration, I also defined from an API permissions point of view that I want to have a delegated permission. So uh, uh, under the name of the currently connected user, I want to be able to do files.readwrite and sites.readwrite.all. And I have granted those permissions to my application as a tenant admin. So when I am in the function, I get a request, I validate the authentication and the authorization of the user. I can then through this property of my custom attribute say, please create a new access token, which will allow me on behalf of the user to consume another API, which is Microsoft Graph. And in fact, in my local settings file, I defined that I have my application with its client secret, which is clearly secret, so you will not see it, and the permission scopes that I want to use to consume Microsoft Graph. And inside my function middleware, I will take care of creating a, uh, an end shake, running end shake with the on behalf of flow of uh, entra ID so that inside my function, I can then say, give me the principal of the request, which can be a user or an application in my scenario is a user, and give me the on behalf of token. This guy, this token will be an access token, and I will show you with a breakpoint that I can use to consume Microsoft Graph on behalf of the user. So let me show you what I mean. Let me go back to the Viva Connection dashboard and let me create another expense report. I'm almost running out of money with all of these expenses, but community dinner again. OK, let me say that it's a travel expense this time. And it will be one for yesterday. Let me get the receipt, add it and submit. Now here in this property, we have an access token. Let me copy it and let me press F5 to avoid having a timeout. OK, if I'll go back here and create another instance of jot.ms, we can see that now this token is not anymore targeting my application. You see here the app ID is this one and we are having a scope of expense report dot create while here we are consuming Microsoft Graph. So the target audience is now Microsoft Graph. This is the uh, unique ID of Microsoft Graph. And from a permission scope perspective, we have the permission scopes for Microsoft Graph. So basically we translated our access token from the one uh, uh, which was provided to consume our uh, backend API into another one to consume Microsoft Graph, but still on behalf of the currently connected user. And as such, when I come here, I can use a graph client type that I created. In this graph client object, I simply provide in the constructor the access token that I want to use. And then in the save expense report file method, I get as an input the expense report object, as well as the file stream of the receipt that I want to upload. And here, just using the Microsoft Graph SDK version 5, I get a new graph client object. I get the target uh, drive, meaning the target document library in SharePoint Online. I get the name of the file that I want to upload, and to make it unique, I use a GUID. And then I upload with a put async into the content of that file inside the drive via the graph client. So basically I do the upload of the file. I get a reference to the just uploaded file and using, still using Microsoft Graph, I update the fields of that item in the target list, which is the library, using a set of 
fields, which are the custom fields that I have in my custom content type. And as such, I can do the upload and I can set the fields in the target content type. Again, from a patterns point of view, uh, we need to have an Azure function, which will then be hosted on Azure indeed. And in the Azure function, we can rely on a middleware to do the authentication and the authorization so that we can easily in the function rely on an attribute to do the authorization filter and eventually to uh, benefit of the on behalf of flow. The on behalf of flow will give me back an access token based on the permission scope that I have configured in my application settings. And then using the graph SDK, I can do whatever I need to do in order to upload my file and process all of the metadata and all of the other stuff. So this is to give you an end-to-end -end view about what you can do in the right way using an adaptive card extension uh, as a front end, either from a mobile or a desktop uh, device, and a REST API based on an Azure function in the back end. Just a few more things and then uh, we can go back uh, to you, Chris. Few useful links. The first one is the sample in the adoption.microsoft.com sample gallery. The second and the third one are uh, basic uh, uh, guidance documents about how you can create an adaptive card extension with sample framework and how you can consume Microsoft Graph API using the Graph SDK version 5. I think that's all for me. Uh, it took a bit longer than expected, but fine because we are almost eating the hour. So thank you and back to you, Chris. All right. You know, I, uh, I keep refreshing my inbox, but I haven't gotten those community dinner invites yet. Uh, I, I assume <laughs> we're all coming now. Huh? What's going on? All right. Wait for see. it. So, yeah, I mean, there's only like 10 of them. I think uh, you've, you've started an obesity epidemic here in the PNP community. So that's all right. Oh, all right. Here we go. Uh, if you got feedback about this call, uh, you know, you can go to that link right there. Uh, David's probably already pasted in chat, or he will in just a moment. Uh, do you fill that out and let us know what's going on, good or bad? Um, you know, most of say really nice things about me. That makes me feel uh, really good. Uh, that'd be great. All right. <laughs> I don't read these. <laughs> That's all, David and Vanessa. Okay, so let's see. Uh, but do join our Discord server. I do read that. Uh, so if you head on over here, there's a great spot where you can ask questions. Uh, you can get that kind of live uh, chat going, kind of like we've had here in the chat here. So you can have some of that conversation, keep it going there uh, rather than here. Uh, that's a great spot where you can chime in and help someone else out too. Uh, but it's also a good spot to keep up on the blogs and all sorts of other stuff that's going on. And a good spot just to socialize. If you want to jump on, you can turn on your headset and just have a conversation if you've got something going on. Uh, maybe there's someone there that can help you out. All right. And then finally, thank you so much. This call uh, will be recorded and posted on YouTube within uh, 24 hours. You'll see a link here in the chat, but uh, you can't click that. Ignore that. That's just uh, that's just some silly stuff. Uh, but it'll be on YouTube soon, and then we'll divide up all the demos as well. So if you want to dive in a little deeper on uh, what Paolo was talking about, um, or, or Robin or the other presenters here, Casper and all that stuff, do that. That'd be great. And uh, that's it for me. Wow. -wee. <laughs>